Welcome back. You're still watching Network Africa on Channels Television. Well, it's been more than two months since the Ghana Inferno happened. You will recall that at least 150 people lost their lives in the process. A committee set up by Ghana's government to investigate the fire and flood disaster says a lit cigarette dropped by or dropped on an overflowing petrol pool caused the fire. The man who is accused of dropping the cigarette is under arrest and is being investigated to see if he did it deliberately. The disaster started at a petrol station where the people were sheltering from the rain which had caused the storage tanks to overflow. Now, the Ghanaian government has also made some concessions to the demands of striking doctors. However, we understand that the doctors, do, the doctors did not necessarily get everything that they wanted as the government varied and rejected outrightly some of the demands. As the government takes speedy decisions to avert a threat by doctors to resign in mass this month, the authorities have tried to reason with the doctors to return to work. The doctors are currently on an indefinite strike after saying the government has failed to give them any condition of service despite repeated promises from the administration. Now what you're seeing on your screen is just some of the demands which were made by the doctors. Now they're, what they're asking is that members of the Ghana Medical Association be entitled to 40% of basic salaries as accommodation. And also there should be fuel allowance ranging from 80 to 100 gallons per month. And members of the GMA are also entitled to an official vehicle. Now to maintain that vehicle, they also require 20% of their basic salary. They are equally entitled to an overtime duty allowance and on-call duty facilitation, which is 20% of the basic salary. Clothing allowance is also 30% of the basic salary, and book allowance is 30% of the basic salary. Utility allowance is also 20% of the basic salary. Professional allowance is 50% of the basic salary. Special risk allowance is 25% of the basic salary as well. We also understand that the Ghanaian government did agree to some of the terms, but not all of them. Well, still to come on Network Africa. We take a look at the connection between the Boko Haram insurgency and the Mediterranean crisis. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Network Africa on Channels Television. Well, it's been almost a week since Burundi's powerful General Adolf Nshimirimana was murdered and several arrests have been made in a bid to find the assailants. It's very important to note that none of those arrested so far are the masterminds behind the murder. Those are still being sought. Another target last week was a prominent human rights activist, Pierre Claver. Mbonimpa, and he was shot and wounded in an apparent reprisal attack following General Nshimirimana's killing last week. He's since been allowed to fly to Belgium for treatment. This unrest began when, unrest began when President Pierre Nkurunziza started his third term bid, which has led to dozens of civilian deaths as well as the displacement of well over 180,000 Burundians who have fled to neighboring countries. Now, suspected Boko Haram gunmen have killed four people on Sunday in a road ambush in Nigeria's restive northeastern state of Bornu. A car carrying six people came under attack on the Damwa Biu Road near the remote village of Unwajuko at about 9.30 a.m. local time. The militant group, which has killed thousands of people during its six-year armed campaign to set up an Islamic state in northeastern Nigeria has carried out several attacks on the Dambwa B road in the last two years. 
Now, the war on terror is definitely on, but many are fearful about the Nigerian president's latest strategy, which might be looming. According to the president's spokesperson, President Muhammadu Buhari has welcomed negotiations with the Boko Haram set. This is clearly against the earlier stance of the president, who during his campaign promised to desist from negotiating with the insurgents if he was elected president. The negotiation was deemed a good idea if it involved the freedom of the Chibok girls who have been kidnapped for over a year, but not when it comes to attacks. It will be recalled that Boko Haram carried out fresh waves of massacres, including that which we just told you about in Dambua Biu, and they have killed over 100 people since violence on Friday of last week. Now let's just take you through attempts which have been made by the Nigerian government in the past to negotiate with the Boko Haram sect. Now you will recall that this move was made by the Good Luck Ibele Jonathan administration and what happened in this case was that there was a decision taken to negotiate and that happened on October the 12th, 2014. The Chief of Defense Staff then ordered a, um, officers to comply with the decision. After that, the violence persisted despite the ceasefire. Villages were then invaded by the sect members on the same day in which the decision to negotiate was taken. The troops then launched a counter-attack and the sect has continued mass abductions after that ceasefire announcement, the most recent being what we saw happen in Damboa BU yesterday. Well, we go live to Washington, D.C. We'll do that in a moment. We'll be joined by the Voice of America's Jeffrey Young for more on that. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening with Nigerian illegal migrants. Now, we did tell you when we came back from the break that we're going to show you the connection between the Boko Haram insurgency and the Mediterranean crisis.